What is going on guys, Drumvillain here bringing you some more Pokemon Go PvP content and Element Cup is still here, we've also still got Master League and Master League Classic going on and I'm going to probably bring you guys a couple of Master League videos after this one. I feel like Element Cup is very, it's a very stale meta, let's be honest, there aren't that many exciting picks to choose from in Element Cup if you want to succeed, there's kind of a few top picks and you have to pick between them and then it's rock paper scissors on what you come up against and what you win against. Don't get me wrong, I've really enjoyed Element Cup and I enjoy that Niantic are playing around with different meta ideas and trying to shake it up in that way to give us more variety in the kind of matchups that we have and the kind of gameplay we have in Go Battle League but still it's, I feel like it's kind of run its course at this point but the team I'm going to be talking about today is going to be very close to the last team we were running but as you can see we've now got Bulbasaur in the lineup and Bulbasaur is a very very strong pick in Element Cup it deals well with the waters it deals well with other grass types because it can one shot them with sludge bomb and it's double resisting grass moves itself because it's grass and poison typing and it also does well against Cottony and Cottony is quite a common pick in this meta just because the charm damage is so relentless Bulbasaur resists that and can one shot with the sludge bomb and I've also had great success with this team running Bulbasaur in the lead and Chinchou and Growlithe in the back still using Growlithe mainly as the safe swap um, it really depends on what kind of leads you're running into where you are in the uh, elo rating range but generally I find that either Chinchou or Bulbasaur make a very strong lead in this meta if you find that you're running into a lot of confusion leads like slow pokes and executes Chikorita is a great replacement for Bulbasaur. It doesn't do quite as well in some other matchups, but the fact that it's not weak to the confusion damage does it wonders. And also for Growlithe, if you've not got a Shadow Growlithe, or if you're just wanting something with a little bit more bulk, then Vulpix is a great choice. It still has Ember, still has Body Slam, but it also has Weather Ball, which is a slightly better fire charge move than Flamethrower is. Although there's not many situations that you're gonna be wanting to actually throw Flamethrower from Growlithe, so. Either way, but Jin Chao kind of serves a very unique role in being able to shut down water types and ducklet. So, with all that out of the way, let's jump into some matchups. Now, with Jin Chao on lead, you are going to find a lot of ducklet leads. Like, I just decided to record like two or three sets running this team with Jin Chao in the lead, and I ran into a lot of ducklet leads. And the good thing here is that it forces them to swap out into Wooper, and Wooper is another kind of fringe meta pick. Just because it's got such great coverage against things like Chinchow and the fires and um, with having that mud bomb spam and body slam spam to be honest mud shot is a very very powerful move but we're able to farm down with vine whip but now we've got a lot of energy we can throw at this ducklet we might as well go for the harder hitting move we're not going to quite make it to two seed bombs and that does a good chunk of damage so now if they choose to stop him we're going to farm him down but they can't and they've got a barboach in back so this trainer is running Ducklet and then double pseudo mud boys in the back and it's a shame that our uh, that our Bulbasaur is spent here but also we needed it to deal with the Wooper as well. So there's not much we can do, we just bring in the Growlithe and just sack it completely but I don't think there's much we can do here. Really we should have stayed in with the Chinchow a little longer and maybe thrown another Bubble Beam at the Barboach first. Maybe then the Growlithe could have survived the mud bomb to then get a body slam off put a bit more pressure on this barboach because Chinchow wouldn't need much to finish off ducklet at this point but we're not going to be able to finish off this barboach it's going to wall us off here and they're going to take the win so if you're looking for something a little bit spicier on the outside the mud boys can do you quite well but they can be shut down very very hard by grass types now speaking of grass types cottony damn cottony and its bulkiness the grass typing, the fairy typing, it's a pain in the ass. You're going to see a lot of ducklets in the lead and you're also going to see a lot of cottonies in the lead. And we thought, swap out to Bulbasaur because this, this team works well in that we've got two pretty good punishers to a cottony because Bulbasaur resists the charm or razor leaf in this case and Growlithe resists both charm and razor leaf. So we can put a lot of pressure on and Bulbasaur makes a pretty solid safe swap um, just because it shuts down waters and other grass types and we draw to seal and we're able to take switch advantage which is absolutely huge for us because now we can keep Chinchow away from the cottony we can get Growlithe on it which has a very strong matchup 
against Cottony. And we can just, we can do a lot of work on this Chin Chow with the Bulbasaur. So we figure we might as well now sack our Chin Chow just to get rid of this energy. Because Growlithe's main drawback is that it is pretty squishy. And they swap out to Cottony. They realise they've lost that match and that's going to be a GG. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but now we can see our own and our opponent's ELO in matches at the start. So just above the badge that shows what ranking you and what your opponent are, there's now the number showing the ELO rating since Niantic has actually improved the matchmaking so that it's much harder to dodge people because a lot of people were trying to, like, they had tricks to, like, get out of actually having matchups against trainers with lower ELO because they were at risk of losing more points and not gaining as many if they won. But now that that's been somewhat improved, it's still a problem, but it's not as bad. It seems that they're rolling out, allowing trainers to see each other's ELO rating again. Uh, I'm not sure if this is available for everybody yet, um, but it's, I think it's a nice touch. I don't mind being able to see what the actual ELO rating of my opponents are. I, I don't mind it really either way, just because I don't dodge opponents. I don't care what my opponent's ELO is. I'm just looking for a good matchup and to have some fun. Now, in this matchup, you can see there's a duck alert, but we've got two shields on our Growlithe. So we don't have switch advantage, but with a two shield advantage, Growlithe can put in a lot of work against Ducklet because two body slams are going to take it out. So we're going to get this second body slam off. This is going to be enough to annihilate this Ducklet and then we're going to be able to put work in on this Cottony that's in the back. And Cottony does very well against um, Chin Chow, but a Bubble Beam and Thunderbolt combined will do around 50% of a Cottony's health. So I'm going to get the Bubble Beam off here just to nerf that Chine damage a little by his more time to get to the Thunderbolt and this is going to be enough to take out the Cottony. So even if you lose Switch Advantage against a Grass type, in which Chin Chow is going to struggle against, if you've got Shield Advantage, you can still put in a lot of work and flip some of those matchups around. So again there we can see mine and the opponent's ELO rating just above the badge. And in this matchup we've got a Chin Chow mirror match. As we said, this is a pretty scary mirror match. It's not as scary as it was with the previous team because Chin Chow was our best answer to Chin Chow in the last team. Whereas with this one, we have Bulbasaur. So we don't mind if we kind of lose this matchup. So we're happy to not shield and call the bluff. Because if we did, we can just get Bulbasaur onto this thing, start farming up, get energy advantage, we've got shield advantage, and Growlithe and Bulbasaur both do very well with shield advantage. But since we called their bluff, we're happy to shield up, and then the opponent's pressured to swap out into Vulpix. And this is a decent, um, situation for Chin Chow to be in because we can spam the bubble beams even though we are debuffed which is a little problematic but we're not too stressed we figure we might as well use the Growlithe here not shield this up because um, it's double debuffed anyway and it wouldn't be enough to take us out we can farm down completely we've got a lot of energy on this Growlithe so we're gonna threaten whatever comes in here with quite a bit of damage and it looked like a ducklet maybe I, f I missed that was it a ducklet yeah it's a ducklet which could be problematic just because we're pretty low on uh, health on our Chin Chow, but they swap out aggressively to their own Chin Chow, which is their undoing here because this means we can lock Bulbasaur on, farm up a lot of energy, and that's the advantage we need to take out this Ducklet. We're going to swap into our own Chin Chow to pressure the opponent to throw. I'm going to throw this Bubble Beam, force the last shield at this point because they're so low, although they don't shield which is madness and the opponent surrenders. I think they realized that we had enough energy on the Bulbasaur and that the game was over there either way. So jumping into our next matchup and we pull a Chikorita lead. And Chikorita lead is pretty bad for this team. Obviously it's the grass and it's against the Chin Chow, which is really not what we want. And we decide to save swap into Bulbasaur because Growlithe has a better matchup against Chikorita than Bulbasaur does. And the opponent doesn't shield the Sludge Bomb because Vulpix can comfortably survive a Seed Bomb. So we figure we might as well just throw the Sludge Bomb and either get a shield or get Switch, which we do. We're able to take them out, and now we're going to get to another Sludge Bomb here. If they don't shield this, this will one-shot Chikorita as well. They do shield it. They learned the lesson from the Vulpix. So now we've got Switch Advantage back, Emron even shields, which is absolutely amazing for us here. Um, yeah, beware the Sludge Bomb. If you're against a Bulbasaur, they swap out to Ducklet, and now we can lock Chinchow onto it and getting switch advantage was absolutely crucial in that match. And sometimes that's what's nice about 
Like Growlithe is the safer, safe swap in general between that and Bulbasaur. But swapping to Bulbasaur can throw some opponents off because a lot of people might run uh, Chikorita and then double water in the back, in which case they're a little stumped on what to bring out against a Bulbasaur. Whereas if you bring out Growlithe and they've got a water to hard punish you, they can still push that hard advantage. And in this game, it really paid off for us, especially just because they didn't shield that sludge bomb. Now, I think this is going to be enough to take out the Growlithe. So we do still lose the matchup because Chikorita is very strong and very strong with Body Slam, but we gave it a much better try just for taking switch advantage and I bet our opponent was sweating a little bit there. So another Cottony lead and again we're swapping into Bulbasaur and we're hoping to do the same again in this match. Straight for the Sludge Bomb, are they going to shield? Are they going to let it go through? What's going to happen? They do shield. So, so our, our play at this point really is to bring in the Chin Chow and we really don't want to be shielding this Chin Chow at all just because we know it's locked against the Cottony either way. So really, Growlithe with a shield advantage is our win con in this game, but we do need to get rid of this Vulpix, and it did get up a lot of energy. So this is why Growlithe is a better safe swap in general than Bulbasaur, because if they lock in a fire type and get that energy advantage, it can cause you a lot of problems, even though we had a Chin Chow to lock it down. Afterwards, we bring out the Growlithe and they've got a Chin Chow of their own. In backs, this is not looking like a good matchup but as as we've said it's a very rock paper scissors meta and if you get that bad lead and you get that punishing counter swap there often isn't that much that you can do to to get around it you're probably just going to lose if you've got the wrong lead and the wrong counter swap so we surrender there and jumping into the next match and it's a chin chow mirror match again so we're going to go for the same strategy again we're going to bait with the bubble beam and then throw the thunderbolt and in this matchup, we actually lose CMP tie, which is kind of unfortunate. So we're going to shield, and it is the Thunderbolt, which is it's very good to shield the Thunderbolt. Now, if they shield this, we're looking really good, and they don't. So now we're looking really bad because they've got shield advantage. But we can get to the Thunderbolt first because obviously we threw the Bubble Beam, and they're forced to shield that. So now we're in even shields. They've got less health, and they've been debuffed. So we're going to let this go through. It's another Thunderbolt, that's fine. We're going to bring in the Bulbasaur and start farming up some energy. So as we've said, Bulbasaur with energy is pretty scary. They bring in a Growlithe, and really we should have thrown a Seed Bomb here, just because Growlithe is squishier than Vulpix, so a Seed Bomb would still threaten big damage. But we get the last shield, swap out to Growlithe, and they've got Chikorita in the back, and we decide we're just going to farm this thing down. It'll be close, but we're going to farm it down completely, and then throw Body Slam at the Growlithe in the back and that should be enough to give us the win. Although that Growlithe is very healthy, and Body Slam doesn't quite one-shot. Oh, it does. It does shadow on shadow, yeah, it one-shots. So we take the win there, GG. A lot of this cup we've found up to this point is really the energy advantage is king. It's all about having as much energy as possible because most Pokemon are threatened by charge moves. They're threatened one-shot by most things. Um, it's having that energy is almost more important than having the right matchup if you can set it up right. And this matchup we get a slowpoke lead. Again, this is a this is a solid lead for Chin Chow, but if the slowpoke shields up the Thunderbolts, you can definitely lose this matchup just because the confusion damage is so oppressive. Um, we think we might let this go. We're not sure. Yeah, we decided to let this go and see what we can do with Growlithe because we don't want Bulbasaur aligned with this thing. But you can see the confusion damage is just tearing through our team at this point. And this is a situation where Chikorita would be nice because it can safely farm down the Slowpoke. And now they've got Ducklet in the back and our Chin Chow's gone, which is kind of bad. But also we've got a good amount of energy on this Growlithe. We can threaten with this second Body Slam. We'll threaten to take out the Ducklet. And then I think we're going to swap out to Bulbasaur. See what work we can put in on what's in back. They're going to throw a move and we have to shield. If this is Brave Bird or Aerial Ace, it would take us out. And it's the Aerial Ace, which I'm happy with. Swap out to Vulpix. So we can land the Sludge Bomb, but we get a little greedy. So they can throw first. It's a Weather Ball. It takes us out. So that's it. The game's over there. Um, the Sludge Bomb probably wouldn't quite have been enough to take out the Vulpix. But it might have given us a chance to farm down with Growlithe. Maybe get to a last second Body Slam. But either way, GG. Another Cottony lead, and again, Bulbasaur save swap, and again, punished by a Vulpix. 
we really need to learn our lesson and really start say swapping into Growlithe. But again, they don't shield. Bang! Get wrecked, Vulpix. So we take switch advantage back, which is wonderful for us. We're not able to get to a second sludge bomb. We're able to get to the seed bomb and we get the shield. So really, it doesn't matter. Best scenario, really. We've got switch, we've got growth locked on Cottony, and we got our shield advantage. So we're going to shield this up. We're going to be able to farm down, threaten whatever's in back. And I think our opponent surrenders. That's going to be a GG. It is crazy how fast some of these games go by because a lot of this is fast moves. It's all about swap advantage. Every charge move often threatens just to knock Pokemon straight out. So these games don't take very long at all. Definitely great for spamming out your matchups if you're just wanting to get them done and get that extra Stardust bonus. Now we've got a Vulpix lead and we knew we could take the first charge move so we don't bother shielding. But if we'd have thrown Thunderbolt, we do one shot. Um, but we figured we'll go for double Bubble Beam. So we built up extra and figured we'd throw two. And now this Vulpix is double debuffed. So we're going to let this go down. We've got shield advantage and we're going to farm down completely with Growlithe, I think. Yep. And they might get to a Body Slam. Yeah, that's a little unfortunate. This will still do big damage, but we can survive it. It's one of the few, <laughs> one of the few scenarios where Growlithe can take a charge move. And they've got Chin Chow in the back. So we're going to throw this Body Slam, pressure some big damage, swap to Bulbasaur, see what they've got in back, and it's a Sawaddle. And I was a little thrown out by this, I wasn't expecting Sawaddle at all. We figure, let's just go straight for Sludge Bomb. Let's just see what we can do. We do get the shield, and you can see that I think that's Bug Bite, and it's really shredding us, and we're not able to get to the second Sludge Bomb. Like, one turn away from it, that's really bad for us. But now we're going to hope to farm down with Growlithe because this is double super effective. And if we can get to another Body Slam on Chin Chow, we might just be able to take them out. So despite completely losing Bulbasaur to bad timing and bad counting of health and energy, we're going to still be able to take the win here. Bang it out of there, Chin Chow, and it's going to be a GG. So if you do make a big mistake like that and just lose a whole Pokemon, you might still be able to bring it around. It's surprising how many matchups you can do that in. Um, it's always worth fighting until the end. And here we've got an execute safe swap. And if you're fast enough swapping to Growlithe and you've got good enough defensive IVs to be able to tank that last confusion barely, you can just farm down before they get to their charge move. It's very close. You have to be very, very fast responding with that counter swap, but you can do it. If you're slightly slow, they'll get to a charge move. And then you either have to shield or you have to throw on your own body slam. And then if they shield that, they get a confusion through. They can flip switch advantage back. So you got to be fast. But uh, it does pay off if you can nail it because then we had energy to dump into um, the ducklet afterwards. Now we've got Bulbasaur for this Lotad and it's going to be a good game. This Lotad can't really do anything. At this point, we've got shield advantage. We've got a very healthy Bulbasaur. We're double resisting the Razor Leafs. So it's just a matter of grinding the, the opponent down. They're going to stay and they're going to fight to the end. you got to respect it, but they're not going to be able to pull this one off and it's going to be our win and it's going to be a GG. Lotad is an interesting pick, but I personally wouldn't recommend it just because it's not resisting fire moves. So it doesn't really serve a strong purpose as a water type. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't make it as effective as a grass type because it's taking neutral damage from grass moves as well. Now, another Chin Chow mirror match. Same plan, we've committed to this strategy, bait with the bubble beam and then throw the thunderbolt. Um, we might shield this, yeah we're going to shield this, we've got a feeling and it is a thunderbolt so that's great for us. We've got a significant energy advantage and the opponent's debuffed. So we're going to overcharge by one spark just because we know we've got time to. Then throw the thunderbolt, the opponent shields and we sneak a spark through here. Which is great, we know we've definitely got the energy advantage, we're going to let this go through. It is a Thunderbolt, we don't mind. I'm gonna come with Bulbasaur and farm this thing down just because we know that we've got two. Well, we've got a shield advantage, we've got a shield advantage. They're swapping Growlithe, we're swapping our own Growlithe. And I think we're gonna shield this Body Slam, farm up a couple of extra embers worth just because we know we can, and then throw the Body Slam. But we lag a little bit, so we have an absolute heart attack, panicking they're gonna get another Body Slam off and waste our shield and energy, but they don't quite. And now we're going to be able to, if they bring the Chin Chow back in, we'll be able to get to a Body Slam and take them out. But they've got a Ducklet. And this is now a little scary, but this Ducklet will go down to a Body Slam. 
and a seed bomb, but our Bulbasaur didn't. Oh, it does have a seed bomb ready. I was gonna say, if we didn't have the seed bomb ready, we'd be at risk of taking an area laser being took out, but they don't. So we're able to take them out and this opponent surrenders there. GG. It might also have been worth throwing the seed bomb at the Growlithe just to get the shield and then possibly farm down with our own Growlithe. But either way, it worked out pretty well for us. And in this matchup, we've got a Vulpix on lead that's staying in, which means they might have a Ducklet in back, but also it's not running Ember. I believe it's, is it Quick Attack or something else like that that it's running as a fast move. They swap in a Slowpoke and we are all falling apart in this. We swap in a Growlithe. Realistically, we should have stayed in with the Chinchow, but we knew we were low enough that we get farmed down. Anyway, we bring the Chinchow back in and throw the Thunderbolt, but the opponent can probably smell the desperation at this point. They're probably going to double shield, which means that Bulbasaur is absolutely screwed here. We shield, but there's not much we can do. We can't even get to another charge move um, before. Well, actually, we would have possibly got to the bubble beam with a throw again, so we're going to let this go through. We're going to farm down with Bulbasaur, take a truckload of damage, and hope Bulbasaur can just one-shot both things that are in the back. That's the only hope for this match. Um, they bring the Vulpix back in, and we're going to go straight for the Sludge Bomb. This might just be enough to take it out, might be a little short, we won't be able to... Yeah, so that it nearly takes them out. You've got Chikorita in the back, and we're going to shield this, throw the Sludge Bomb, which will one-shot the Chikorita, and then just hopefully get one Vine Whip through on the Vulpix, and hopefully it's enough to take it out. Is it going to be enough to give us the win? It's going to be super close. That Vulpix had quite a bit of energy left over. We do take them out, we take the win, GG. Bulbasaur with one shield able to sweep that entire line and you and the one was a confusion and one was a fire type it's crazy but sometimes that's just the way it goes in this cup just because everything's so squishy that one shield advantage and good energy management can really just flip games in your favor now I'm going to leave you guys with this matchup this is the last one I've got for you guys so it's going to play away at a slightly slower speed now I hope you guys have been doing well with element cup or Master League or Master Classic, whichever you're playing and focusing on. I hope it's going going well for you. Don't forget to like the video if you did enjoy it and subscribe if you want to see more videos and tap the bell if you want to know when I upload new videos, new teams. If you're already subscribed, you're an absolute legend and I will catch you guys next time.